This is an overview of the PEP Billboard project. First thing you'll need to do is go to Blackboard and download the PEP Billboards folder. Uh, after you expand that on your computer or drag it over to your flash drive, you'll end up seeing this folder with all these different items. The first thing you'll need to do is open up the Oswald font folder. I downloaded all these different pieces because we're going to be using this a few for a few different projects this semester, but the only piece that you really need to uh, install is the Oswald bold font to complete this project. After that, uh, listed at the top of the folder, there's also going to be a PET Billboards instructions and text document. When you open it up, it kind of gives an overview of what you're supposed to do. You're going to recreate the two existing billboards, like the sample. You're going to create three, a third billboard where you're going to find your own photograph, and then you have more leeway in being able to change things around to make it work with whatever's going on inside the picture, the proportions, the color, etc. Up at the top, I've given you an awful lot of the specs, the overall size, um, the font used, uh, font sizes, letting, and different things like that. And then down at the bottom is all the text that you'll need for all three of them. So from there, we're going to go to InDesign. And it says to make a 24 by 10 inch billboard, 24 by 10 foot billboard, which People typically in this industry would have you build something that large at one inch equals one foot. So I've gone to a new document in InDesign. I'm turning the facing pages button off. I'm going to go ahead and enter 24 in by 10 in with no spaces. That's going to create a document that's 144 picas by 60 picas. It should be wanting to go ahead and give you a three pica margin. And we'll just use that for this project. That's basically a half of an inch. So click OK. Next thing we do is we're going to work on the Bulldog one first. I know that the picture needs to bleed and fit the exact dimensions of this page. So I'm going to go get either the Rectangle Frame tool or the Rectangle tool. Click the tool on the page because I know the exact dimension and type in 144p by 60p. And it's going to go ahead and create the exact size frame that we need. I can then try to move this up until it sits on the top left corner of the page, or at least get it close. The reference point thing up here in the very top left corner should have the top left dot being much bigger than the rest of them. That's how we typically use it, although you can move it to some other point. And when I finally get this box placed exactly where it's supposed to be, the X and the Y coordinates for the top left corner will say 0p0, which means you're exactly in the top left corner. And again, it's reminding you 144 by 60. Then I'm going to go to File Place. I need to make sure that the rectangle is selected when I do this, which it still is. If not, I go back up and take the black arrow tool and click on the frame itself. Then I go up to File and I pull down to Place. Navigate to the Pet Billboards folder. We're going to place the French Bulldog Summer Smile Joy, a number and then the word Wide. And it's going to place the picture. And more than likely, it's going to place it just like this. This picture is not quite the proportion we need. It is not able to run to the entire sides. It'll fill the height, but it is short on the width here by, it looks like, 12 picas, probably on either side, or by 2 inches. So we're going to have to enlarge the picture. Probably the best way to do this, or at least as a starting point, is to go up to Object and pull down to Fitting and slide over to where it is fill frame proportionally. Ultimately, this is probably a keyboard shortcut that you're going to want to remember. By doing that, it's going to enlarge the picture, not so that it would just fit the height, but it's going to also change the height proportionally so that now it just fits the width of this. Um, or I can go back if you wanted to see it, go fitting, fill content proportionally, and that pretty much gives us what we had before, which is fill the picture box, but do not allow any of the picture to crop. Again, we do want the fitting fill frame proportionally. The picture is still smaller than what we had on this one, where I'm zoomed in even more. And that's so that I have some flexibility to move the, the face of the dog side to side. But again, right now we can't do that on ours because it is running the entire picture to right here. If I moved him left or right, I'm gonna get a white gap on either side. So I'm gonna go get the white arrow tool, or the direct selection tool, click it on the dog. And at this point, I, I could change these numbers from 120. And as long as this chain command is on, it's going to constrain the portion. So if I was to type in something for the uh, for one of the dimensions, like the width dimension, and then hit the tab button, it'll automatically 
calculate that same thing for this, or here's a sh keyboard shortcut to walk the size up. It's the command and option button, not command and shift, command and option. And then I go find the greater than symbol or the period button. One, two, three, four. I walked it up to, it looks like I'm mine 146%. Now if I was to push and hold with the tool, it's changed to a hand, which means I can slide the picture left or right. And I'm going to slide it over a little bit more, and we're just going to use this as our starting point to see how we're doing. So move him up, because I need to be able to see just a little bit of the red collar there. I'm going to go back and look at the go-by. And that's looking reasonably close to start with. A little bit of this ear, quite a bit of this ear, and just a little bit of the collar showing here. So for right now, I bet we're going to say that that is probably fine. Then I'm going to go ahead and start working on the headline area over here. So I'm going to go get the black arrow tool, click off the page so nothing is selected. <clears throat> I'm going to slide the, um, the scroll bar over here so I can see the left edge of the page. And I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to go down to Place. And I'm going to place the text instructions. If I just clicked here, it's going to run the entire width, so it's going to overlap our document. So I'm going to hit Command-Z to undo that, and instead... I'm going to draw a box with the text tool to say, just stay over here to the left, but don't encroach on top of my picture. And then I'm going to hit Command-1 to zoom in so I can read it easier. And I'm going to highlight all of the headline from number one. <clears throat> Go up to Edit, pull down to Copy. Command-0 to take me home. Plus, that also moves it back to the billboard and not off the side of the page. I'm going to draw a text box. I know it's going to overlap the dog slightly, so I'm going to go ahead and let it overlap onto the dog a little bit. Then I'm going to go up and hit Edit, Paste. While the text is still selected, Command-A to select all. And I'm going to change this font to Oswald Bold. And I already gave you the dimensions for this. It is 84. <coughs> by 84. I also know that the metrics should be set to be optical for anything that large. And I'm just going to go ahead and give you a hint. This should be minus 25 for the tracking. And then I'm going to come back down and take a look at this. I'm going to go back and I'm just going to highlight the headline. And I'm going to click this button right here, which changes it to all cap. If I hover long enough, that'll pop up. And then I'm going to go ahead and highlight just the name of the dog and the adopted line. And I went ahead and set this at half the size of the headline. So it has some kind of proportions. So 42 with 42 for the letting. Um, I then need to do a couple things to this text block. The first thing is I'm going to just triple click on the line with the dash and the Colby. I'm going to change the text tool from the normal one that we use with the A to, in this thing in the top left corner to the paragraph symbol. And when I see this, I open it up and I have more options. I'm going to scroll along here until we get to this one, which is a space before. And I'm going to change that to three picas. I need to make sure that I just have the top line with the Colby selected when I do this. Or if I had all of this information down here, it put half of a, or three picas in front of Colby and in front of the word adopted. Now I need to work on the indenting a little bit. We'll just do that right now. I'm going to highlight this bottom line of the text. And I'm going to go find this one, which is the left indent. And I'm going to change that to be 2P6, or 2.5 picas. And then the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a tab to be able to move this thing over. So I'm going to highlight the line with the dash and the word Colby. I'm going to go up to Type, and I'm going to pull down to Tabs. And this is just like setting them in Microsoft Word. Unfortunately, it's a lot smaller. So I need to get inside this little thin gray stripe right along in here, not the black part where the actual ruler is, not up in here where I could change what kind of tab is. But I push and hold down here, and it's going to pop up a dimension. Right now, for me, it started at 4 picas. I'm going to slide it back so it's also at 2p6 and let go. And that means that when I click in front of the word Colby, I'm going to delete the space after the hyphen. And then I'm going to hit tab, so that now the C and the A should be lined up. And then I want to go ahead and get rid of the tab. We're done with it for the day. So highlight across the bar, click the red dot to make sure that it goes away. 
Then I'm going to go back over here to look to see what I'm going to need to do next. I need to make these quote marks. The thing is, is that, and they're quite a bit bigger, I want to make basically the body of the quote mark be the same size as my headline type. In order to do that, I'd waste a lot of time and it would be probably very frustrating for me to click in front of the sometimes and put this because then I'm going to have to walk this thing up in size. It's, it's a huge number. And then once I think I get the thing closer, then I have to come back over here and I have to use the baseline shift, which is this area here, and start sending it down. So that's just going to take too long. So this is pretty common, what people do. It's also called hanging the punctuation, which is literally having the quote mark hang out to the left so it's not like infringing on the left edge of this text block. So to do that, I'm literally going to make a separate text block. I'm going to move my headline over. And I'm going to go ahead and move it so that the word sometimes is kind of showing up here with the kind of the cap line, which is kind of hard to see because not all the letters fit in the same spot on top of my margin. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to draw a text box. And for this, I need to make it really huge, about this big. And I'm going to hit the left quote mark, highlight it, change this to be Oswald Bold. And I'm going to go ahead and just start off by having the text be 500 point. <clears throat> so that's huge. This is close to being the right size, but it's not the right size. One problem I have, though, too, is I have this huge gap between the quote marks, mainly because nobody would ever have intended you when they drew the font for you to be using a quote mark at 500 point. But this is kind of a carryover on new web design where people use really large quote marks. So there's nothing I could do to tighten this gap. And I'm going to find that this is way too big especially since it's already probably bigger than the gap right here between my words, so that would be very distracting. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this, and I'm going to put just a left single quote, but I'm going to type it twice. And as soon as I'm done with that, I'm going to highlight that by hitting Command A, change this to optical, which moves a little closer, but then I'm also going to type in the tracking dimension of minus 100, and that's going to move them quite a bit closer. And then I'm going to come grab this quote mark with the black arrow tool and I'm going to try to move it up and now I want to do some precise dimension kind of work so I probably need to zoom in the fit in window view is perfect for doing most of your overall design but it's not good for specifics while I have this object selected if I hit command one it'll enlarge it to a hundred percent or probably actual size or I could hit it to be command two but if I, if I have that object selected when I hit Command-1, it zooms to that spot rather than some other random spot on the page. And I know this is kind of hard to see, but it's probably pretty close to the baseline here, but it's actually a little bit larger than the size of the type. Uh, it actually fits right up here on this top margin, but now I realize that I never placed this all the way up. Just so that you don't have to do a lot of work on this, I'm going to suggest that you highlight it. And I'll just tell you that the type size is 484 is probably pretty close to it. And I'm going to hit Command-0 to take a look. Unfortunately, because that type is so huge, even if I made this be a smaller letting number, this is about how big this text block has to be in order to uh, show the entire quote mark. And it's already overlapping a huge amount on top of my headline one. And if it was even maybe a little bit smaller than this, it wouldn't even be able to show up on the page. So we're going to do something that we often do in Illustrator, which is we're going to convert this text to an outline, basically make it a graphic rather than text anymore. That means it won't be editable anymore, so I don't want to do that to this yet. But it's a quote mark, and we already like the spacing between the two parts of it. So go up what it's selected, go up to Type, pull down to Create Outlines, and now it redraws the box to be much smaller so that it's just the size of the quote mark rather than allowing for all the space on the sides and the letting. Command-1 zooms me back into it. I'm going to probably move this down so that the quote mark is sitting right here, the, the body of it, on top of this uh, margin line. I'm going to click on the headline and I'm going to tap it up so it's also sitting in the same spot. So theoretically, this is now about the same size as this is. And then I need to work on how big of a space do I need between the quote mark and my headline. So I'm going to just slide or scroll over a little bit. And I'm going to come in here and draw a rectangle. And I'm going to change. Uh, if I have the quote mark selected, I could have a problem. So I'm going to hold the Command button down to temporarily change my tool to the black arrow. 
and I'm going to click off here so I'm touching nothing. Like that. And then I'm going to go to the swatches command and I'm going to set this to have no fill and a pink. I mean, no stroke, but a pink fill. And then get the rectangle tool and I'm going to try to draw a box that is, look for something easy to find because we're going to basically copy the word spacing um, space over. This is kind of maybe hard to figure out where the edge is or especially on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and borrow this and draw it from the end of this period to this capital I and fill it with pink and come back and look at it. If I'm way off, I could click on the box and move some of these dots to be able to change the size, but I'm, I'm pretty happy and I'm not overly worried about it being absolutely perfect as long as it's pretty close. I'm gonna grab that, I'm gonna move it over here. Try to set it on the edge of the letters. It's sometimes hard to see when it's selected I'm going to tap that over there, and then I'm going to tap the quote mark just with the left arrow because I already have it aligned up and down where I need it to be. I'm just working on this space, and now I like that. <clears throat> I'm going to hit Command-0 to go home. I'm going to click on the quote mark, and I'm going to come up to Edit, Copy, and then Edit, Paste. And while that's still selected, I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to type in 180 degrees in this free rotation box. And I'm going to kind of move it over here beside the word riot. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab the pink spacer and I'm going to move it about in this area. <clears throat> then I'm going to hit command one to zoom to that spot. Again, tap it so that it's right after the period. Click on the quote mark. Tap it over so it's aligned there. Now this thing's job is done, so get rid of it. I probably should do something to help make sure that the baseline's lined up. So a ruler guide would be good for that. I'm gonna go up and push and hold inside the ruler to drag down a hor two horizontal ones. I don't wanna be on this light gray area. I don't wanna just be toward the top of the page. Literally the tip of the arrow has to be in this very dark background of the arrow of the ruler. Push and hold down and if I get that little up and down arrow to pop up, I can pull this down and let it go on top of the, below the bottom of the T. Then I can grab another one and grab it, try to let it go on top of the T. Of course, it doesn't always want to drop exactly where I've got it, so I just am going to look at it and realize that might be a little bit high. Actually, my placement was pretty good on this, but I'm going to click on the quote mark and I'm going to tap it with the arrows up, because again, I've already set this space here. Command zero brings me back home. Uh, and then what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to go ahead and change the color of this. So the first thing that I want to do is let's go add an orange color to the palette. So if the swatch palette is not open right now, I would click on it to open it up. These two symbols up in the top right corner, the two sh double chevrons, if I clicked on that, it collapses the swatch menu back into here like this. Uh, this icon here is often referred to as a sandwich icon, way up in the top right corner of the swatch box because it looks like it's a series of horizontal lines stacked on top of each other, which maybe from the side would look like a stacked sandwich. If I click on that, it's gonna wanna help me go straight to a new color swatch, let go on that. And we're gonna make a fairly standard orange color, which is 0% cyan, uh, cyan. I need to make sure this says process and CMYK, which should be the default. 50% magenta, 100% yellow, 0% black. So the color is 0, 50, 100, 0. And then I can click OK. And I'm going to go back with the black arrow tool, and I'm going to click on one quote mark. And I'm going to change the fill to be orange, making sure that it still has a stroke of none. Click on the other quote mark. Do that to be orange. I'm going to take the text tool, and I'm going to highlight all the copy of this block. As long as I have the swatch palette open, I'm going to tell it to be paper colored. And then I think for right now, I'm done with this, so I can collapse this. Now I'm gonna to need to move this so I can move on to the next corner of the page. But trying to move these things as one, two, three separate blocks is gonna be cumbersome. So click on the quote, hold the shift button down, click on the text, and then try to click on the quote. And more than likely, same thing's gonna go wrong here. Oh, it grabbed it all. If for some reason it wanted to unclick the text on the second, on your third click, just go back and try again. But now I should have kind of blue dots around both quote marks and around the text block, go up to object and pull down to group.
Command G. You're probably going to want to remember that one. And now that I have that set, I'm just going to grab it. And when you move something, if you try to click on it and try to grab the box and move it at the same time, it's going to move the box, but it doesn't look like it's moving the contents until I let go. Most of the time you want to be able to see it as it goes. So instead I'm going to push, I'm going to hold for a second. As soon as I see this little box pop up that's giving me X and Y coordinates, so it's like just a fraction of a second. Now when I move the frame, it's also going to visually show me moving the content. And I'm going to come over here and move this. It's about located here on the page, although we're going to still adjust the dog a little bit later on. Left edge of the quote marks lined up on this margin line, and maybe just partway down the page so that the word human is kind of close to the dog's eye. Then I'm going to click off. Now let's go ahead and place the Adopt logo. So make sure nothing is selected. File, Place, or the shortcut for that is Command-D. Let's place the Adopt logo. Let's make sure we don't click it on top of this or it might try to attach it to this group thing. So somewhere over here. And then I'm going to move it kind of down about where it's supposed to be, kind of off by the dog's mouth, not quite on the bottom of the page, but just somewhere in here just to kind of get me started. And then I'm going to slide over with the scroll bar and I'm going to go find my text, click on the block, Command-1 to zoom to it so I can see it, get the text tool. Under this mandatory section, this is both the slogan and I also went ahead and just put the web address right here. So highlight both those two lines, the shortcut for copy, Command-0. Then I'm going to click over. I'm going to hold down the Command button to get the black arrow tool. Click once on the word adopt. And then I'm going to hit Command-1 to zoom in. Scroll over. <clears throat> I'm going to make a text block. But again, I don't want to necessarily start it inside the logo. I just want to start it slightly somewhere different, so I'm up above it a little bit. I'm going to drag a box maybe about this wide. When I let go, the cursor's blinking. I go up to the shortcut for paste, which is Command-V. I'm then going to go ahead and select the text, and I'm going to tell the font to be Oswald Bold. The size is, for the most part, 20 on 20. I'm going to change the kerning from metrics to optical, which will scoot the letters a little closer together and maybe adjust them a little bit more. And then I'm going to go ahead and grab the black arrow tool. I'm going to move it down. Clearly the letters aren't wide enough because this isn't wrapping like my other one is, so my text box needs to be wider. How about that? Then I'm going to go ahead and highlight, first of all I'm going to get rid of the period after the word pet. I'm going to highlight the top two lines, and I'm going to change these to be all cap. Then I'm going to go ahead and if I was to click, leave this text box clicked, and then hit copy and paste, it's going to make a second one. I'll just stack it over here for a second. On this first one, I'm going to delete the web address. So it just goes to pet, and on the second one, I'm going to delete the slogan. And that way, by doing that, I didn't have to set the Oswald font twice. Make this block a little bit smaller. Move this over and drop it down below the word adopt for right now. Now in order to figure out the rag on this, I'll go back to this so that we can see on the go by a little bit better. The slogan should be aligned a line right and it should stack vertically so it's along this edge of the T. Not the entire width of the T, but this big strong vertical stroke on it. And it does wrap so that it ends after person, best, happen. I'll just kind of remember that. And then the shelter pet project runs from the bottom of the T all the way to the left-hand edge of the A. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back over here to my page. I'm going to select the slogan box, and I'm going to go find the little icon for align right. And it's not wrapping in the right place. So a person, I'm going to click in front of the I and hit return, is the best And then happen are the other two places is the best. So I'm going to click in front of thing and send it down. And then in front of the word to and send it down. So that should be my correct wrap. Uh, as long as I'm here, let me go to the color, the swatch palette, I'm sorry. Let's make another swatch color. I'm going to go back to the sandwich icon, new color swatch. This color, I want it to be 18 magenta, 100 yellow. So I'm making a yellow color, but I'm definitely not leaving it being just the plain yellow because that's really sharp and it almost has a hint of blue or yellow green to it kind of. Well, if I want this to work well with the orange, I 
that I'm using elsewhere on the page, I probably need it to be a little bit warmer. So a lot of yellows look like this, where it would have just a small smidgen amount of magenta in it. Not enough to really make it orange, but it's not a yellow green. It's definitely a yellow orange kind of a color. I'm going to go ahead and highlight this text. Make sure that the swatch is open, change the fill to be that yellow color. And now to get the alignment down, let's just borrow something that's on the page. I'm going to move the adopt. Oops, it's hard for me to get to the adopt logo because this text block is so large. Uh, if I wanted to, so probably the best thing I should do is to move up, grab one of these bottom three dots on this thing and just make it smaller. The adopt logo, we're going to borrow this. I'm going to move it over so that the vertical stroke on the T is right there aligned with this margin temporarily. And so that's going to help me click on this to be able to align the text right above that. Um, then I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to say that the shelter pet project should be running from the A to the T. So I'm going to get the text tool, click on the web address box, command A, go up here, click on the align right. I'm going to move this over, but it's actually going to align itself with this edge of the T. So hanging off a little bit, but it's too wide. So 20 points for it is too big. Uh, rather than having used a bunch of different tools, I'm just going to tell you if you were to select this and change the size of this down to 19, it's probably a little bit on the narrow side. It doesn't quite stretch the edge of the T. There's a bunch of different ways you could calculate that, but I think if you were to try something like 19.2, you'd feel that it was probably about the right distance. Okay, so now let's go ahead and just finish positioning these. Put the shelterpetproject.org so that the right edge of it, the G, is lined up on the margin line. And I'm going to tap this down so that the text is sitting on the baseline. Not the descenders, they dangle down, but the baseline. And then I'm going to come back over and I'm going to click on both the word adopt. And then I'm going to hold the shift button down and also click on the subhead. I'm going to tap them over so that they're sitting like this. I'm using this part of the T to make its adjustment. And then I'm going to come back over here. And I realize that I've got this in the wrong spot. There we go. Um, I'm going to draw a rectangle. And I'm going to draw a little rectangle in here to use the vertical spacer on this. After I've drawn something, I don't care what color it fills with. But I'm going to change the height of it up here in the top left corner, kind of. The width, I don't care. The height to 0p9. And then I'm going to adjust that just like we've done on a couple of other things so that it looks like it's sitting. And if I can't see it all that well, maybe hit Command-2 to zoom in on it. I want to adjust that so that it's sitting on top of the dot on the word project. That's good. And then I'm going to adjust the word adopt so the bottom of the P is touching that. And then I'm going to grab the orange block and I'm going to move it up here and I'm going to set it on top of the D. And I'm happy with that. I'm going to click on the slogan and I'm going to tap it down. So it's sitting on top of that box as well. Just get it pretty close. I'm going to click the orange rectangle, hit delete. As long as it's the text is big here, I'm going to go ahead and take the text tool and highlight the web address. And I'm going to change the color on it from black to paper. And then I'm going to go ahead and highlight just the phrase shelter pet project, not the dot and not the the and I'm going to change that to be orange. And then I'm going to hit Command-0 to zoom, to zoom back out. And I'm going to collapse the swatch palette. I want to go ahead and group these things so that I like the relationship I built on these. I don't want to accidentally move one and have to reposition the other one, so I'm going to click once with the black arrow on the slogan, hold the Shift button down, click on the Adopt logo, and then I'm going to keep holding the Shift down and I'm going to try to click on the web address which in that case, it looks like it deselected the Adopt logo. If I'm having trouble selecting all these, I could zoom in, and that would probably help. So web address, shift, slogan, logo. And when I have all three pieces grabbed, object, uh, I'm going to go to uh, object and group. I'm going to try that one more time. Object group. There we go. So now it's one object again. Command zero to return me home. 
Now I have one more thing to do, really, and then just do some small tweaking, and that's I've got to put these three little logos uh, aligned, and I'll show you what the alignment is, but it's the Ad Council, the Maddie's Fund, and then the Humane Society ones. Let's go back to my document. While I'm here, I'm going to say that the right-hand edge should line up just inside the margin. So again, that means just inside this little thing. Actually, I'm going to just go ahead and change this. We'll just tap the whole group over so that now it's the text lining up against the margin. So a little bit of the T is popping out, and I'm happy with that. So the right edge will be lined up on this margin. The left edge is going to be lined up with an imaginary line kind of where the finger is pointing straight up. So let's make a vertical guideline. Go to the vertical ruler. Again, not over in the tool palette or on the edge of the page. Got to have the tip of the arrow tool right here in the margins. Slide this over. And I'm going to let it go so that that line is just on the left side of the first finger. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to place the first logo. So file, uh, place. This is the Ad Council white logo. I'm just going to click it somewhere up here. Now on the key, it said that this is just to help you out. That is the hundred. That is 100%. That's the exact size that it needs to be. So I'm going to grab it, push and hold, wait for a second so that that gray box pops up, and I'm going to position it about here. I'm going to go hit Command-2 to zoom into that at 200%. I can just use the arrow keys to ever so slightly just adjust the alignment right there. And now I'm going to go ahead and drag a horizontal guideline and let it go underneath the word Council. And now I'm ready to position the other logos, but rather than <clears throat> placing them from, from scratch. Since I know this is about the size I want them to be, I'm going to go ahead and just click on this. And I'm going to notice that this is four and a half pike is wide, 4P6. So I'm going to go up to edit and pull down the step and repeat just so we get to introduce a new tool. I want the count to be two. I want the vertical offset to be zero and the horizontal offset to be bigger than the width of this object. So if this is four and a half picas, maybe I'll just say this should be six picas. And click OK. So now I get three copies of the Ad Council logo. Zoom in, zoom back in, 200%. I'm gonna click on the second one. Click off, then click on the second one, go up to File Place, and I'm gonna place the Maddie's Fund gray logo. I'm gonna click on the third one. <clears throat> Go File Place and go ahead and select the Humane Society white. Oops, I'm sorry, this wasn't supposed to be the gray. This was supposed to be the Maddie's Fund white. Now that I've done that, <clears throat> I've started off with three logos. Uh, these two are definitely not the same size as this one is, uh, but at least they didn't place three or four times as large, so this is going to be easier to work with. I'm going to tap the Maddie's logo up so that it's aligned kind of on this margin line. And then I'm going to go get the scale tool, actually the free transform tool, which is generally the tool right below the scissors on the tool palette. If it doesn't look like this, um, there's a little carrot because there's so many tools it has to hide some of them. So if this doesn't say free transform when you hover on it, try to click on the little carrot right beside here. And that should go ahead and pop up. If you're having difficulty, click off on a different tool. If I was to click on this, it's going to be able to drag out and show what the other options are. But since this is my free transform tool, this is perfect. I'm going to click on this logo with the free transform tool, and I'm going to hold the shift button down to constrain it, and I'm going to grab this bottom right dot, and I'm going to start to pull down and to the right. And when I do this, I could accidentally scale it like this or like this. I'm going to hit Command Z. But as long as I'm if I'm holding the shift button down and I'm trying to drag it so that it looks like I'm keeping it fairly proportional, when I'm done drawing this, it's going to snap back to the right proportion. And I'm going to say that I like this alignment, even if this comes down a little bit lower than this, I could actually enlarge it just a little teeny bit more. And that's because there's going to be an optical illusion. The bottom of this Ad Council logo is so strong such a hard line because these letters are so thick. And this, and especially on this one, it's so thin down here that you sometimes would want to have this logo actually be just a tiny bit taller, dangling down a little bit lower than this one so that it optically is going to weight better. I'm not concerned about exactly how precise you are on that, 
But when I come back in and get the black arrow tool, click off, click on the Humane Society one, go back to the free transform tool, grab the bottom right dot, hold the shift button down, and scale this one to be wider too. I just would like you to keep both of these the same. So my goal is to make them be just a little bit taller. Well, not that much taller, but a little bit taller than that blue line. And I just want the Humane Society one, the Maddie's Fund, to be pretty doggone consistent. Okay, when I'm happy with that, let go. Click on the black arrow tool, click off. I want to space these. This is lined up again with that finger, and I want this one to align over here to the right. So I'm going to hold the shift button down, not the option, but the shift. I'm just going to help me slide it straight to the right. And I'm going to move this over. We could talk about this in class. In some ways, I could align it to the Y, to this margin line. Only problem is, is it's going to look like it's a very weak alignment because this whole logo over here has so much space. So I'm okay with the Y dangling slightly to the right of the margin. I just would want to make sure that this cat was staying within that margin line. And once I'm kind of happy with the placement of, the, of this one and this one, and not worrying so much about this as long as it's um, aligned on the top, I'm going to go get a different tool. So I'm going to click off the page, and I'm going to go Window, Object and Layout, and let go on the Align Palette. This is also the exact same tool that shows up in Illustrator. So I'm going to click on the Ad Council, hold the Shift button down, click on Maddie's Fund, keep holding the Shift button down, click on Humane Society, and rather than me drawing spacers to align these, I'm going to go ahead and let the computer help align this stuff up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with those three things selected on the align part of the palette, I'm going under Distribute Objects, and I'm moving over here. This little icon, the middle one in this group of three on the right, says Distribute based on the horizontal centers. And if I click on that, it's automatically going to space anything in the middle, whether I had five things or three things like this. It uses the one on the left as a guide, the one on the right as a guide, and it spaces everything out in between. Now, as long as I have those three still selected after I just did this without clicking off, let me one more time go up to Object and um, pull down to where it says Group. And I'm done with the alignment palette, so I can click to close that up. So the top right corner is where I need it to be. This is where I need it to be. Now I just need to look at this a little bit, and then I'm going to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to go back over and look at my Go By. And for the most part, again, I'm kind of happy this finger or the thumb should be touching kind of right here where the part of the dog's gum is showing up. Again, a little bit of the red collar. This doesn't have to be precise. Uh, both ears being clipped off. The Ad Council logo is maybe kind of half on this ear and kind of half off. So I'm going to come back over here and look at my placement of this. I'm going to get the white arrow tool, click on the dog, and I'm going to say that I think, if anything, I'm going to go back over and cheat. What is the, okay, yes, this was set at 145%. So I'm going to go back over here to our current document. Let's look to see what the size is. This says 146, okay? I'm going to just highlight this and change the dog to be 145, tab. And now I'm going to just use the arrow I'm going to, I need to be careful because when I've just made an adjustment and I hit the up or down arrows, it actually starts to adjust things by one percent at a time, which sometimes can be handy rather than the five. I'm taking it back to the 145. I'm clicking off on the black arrow tool to clear, going back with the white arrow tool, clicking on it. And now I can either just tap the arrow keys or I could use the hand to move this thing a little bit until I think it's a little bit closer to where I had wanted it to be, and I'm going to say that's good. Okay, then I'm going to click on the black arrow tool and click off the page, and now I'm going to add this drop shadow. So that is, quote, an effect. I'm going to click on this group, which is grabbing all of these objects here. Oh, I guess let's go ahead and change the alignment of the headlines. So it's lined up straight across from his eyeball, right about there. And let's go object, effects, drop shadow. I'm going to move this palette just so I can see some of this. As long as the check mark is on drop shadow and you have this bar across it, because sometimes it might actually load up and it would look something like this. I just want to make sure that the check mark and this highlighted bar are on the word drop shadow. 
There's a lot of ways to adjust this. The fastest thing I'm going to do right now is leave everything in the defaults, but I'm going to down here, I'm going to change option size, and I'm going to change that to 1P, and that'll soften the logo up a little bit. Also going to come in here and just highlight the opacity and maybe change it to 60. So it's just going to fade it back a little bit more. And then when I'm happy with that, changing the opacity to 60 and the size to 1 pica, I'm going to click OK. I'm going to do the same thing on the logo area. That might help especially the web address pop out the white part of this and maybe part of the adopt in the hand stick out from the background. Click on it, object, effects, drop shadow, and I'm going to do the same thing. Change the opacity to 60 and change the size to 1 pica. Click OK. I'm not going to bother to do it up here. These are standing out well enough as is. So at this point, I probably want to hit Save and put it wherever it needs to go. Pet billboard with your name on it, maybe. And now I'm ready to move on to the second one. The neat thing is, is we're going to borrow a lot of stuff from this layout so we don't have to do everything from scratch. So I'm going to come up here to where it says Layout, pull down to Pages. I could go to Insert Pages. This one's kind of fancy because it allows you to insert a page either after page one, or you could actually put it before page one, which would shove the dog to page two and make the cat be on page one. Um, or you can sometimes also just want to say that you want to add a page. That automatically adds a page after this. But let's go ahead and insert pages, one page after page one. Click OK. You can still see part of this one. Now, how do I move between the two pages? Uh, there's a couple ways to do that. One, I could go to the word layout and I could tell it go to page, type in the one or type in the two. I could also come down here and hit the command for go back or go forward. Or down in the bottom left corner, you'll see this number two with a caret right after it. I can push and hold on that and move up and let go on one. So I'm back to this. By not clicking the face, facing pages button, we're going to have a really neat thing we can do now, which is with the black arrow tool selected, hit Command A to select all. It's going to grab all the edges of everything. And I'm going to go up here to hit Copy. And then I'm going to move to page 2. And I'm going to click somewhere on page 2. And then I'm going to go hit Edit, Paste in Place. And that makes a copy exactly in the same coordinates as what the first one was. Rather than by hitting Paste, it probably would have moved it over and to the right. If I'd hit the facing pages button when I started this thing, it, one, page one would be a right-hand page, page two would be a left-hand page, and this wouldn't work at all. So if I don't need the facing pages, leave it off. And now that I'm on this, uh, let's go ahead and quickly change the picture. So I'm going to click on the white arrow tool, click on the bulldog, uh, go up to file and pull down to place. Now I'm going to go find the cat picture which is cat with a number, then the word wide. There's your cat. First thing I'm going to do also is go object, fitting. Oh, I want to do that, so let me click off. Let's go back and click on the picture, object, fitting, fill frame proportionally. And I'm going to tell you that the picture needs to be blown up a little bit. Let's go back and look at my go by for page two. I'm going to want to enlarge this thing so that the tip of the ear is still on the page and this foot is barely on the page. We'll worry about the side to side alignment a little bit later on. I'm just going to click on the hand on this to say this says it was 59.1 then some kind of random part of a number. So I'm going to go back here, click on this with the white arrow tool, command, option, and then I'm going to hit the greater than symbol to walk it up 5% and guess what? That is the right percentage. So that's all I needed to do get the cat on the page, get it to fit in the window, and enlarge it about 5%. So we're done resizing him. We might reposition him later. Um, I already, I, I know that I like the alignment up and down of the quote marks. Um, I know that I like the alignment up and down of these quote marks. Granted, the placing here will change depending on what the headline is. So let's move back over to page one. Or actually, it placed a new copy of the text over here. I'm Click over here, command one to zoom in. I'm gonna go find the cat text, which is this every morning my human shaves off his face fur and including tuck and his adoption date, command zero. I'm gonna go ahead and actually, if I really wanted to steal everything to make it exactly the same, I could just highlight just 
every morning thing. Well, I could highlight from the period after riot right here to this, and I could go up to edit, and I could tell it to paste in place, or I'm sorry, paste without formatting. And by doing that, it's gonna go ahead and put the text in there, and it's gonna do everything that we had done adjustment-wise on that particular block earlier. So the tracking is set at minus 25, this text is set to be optical, the headline letting and size is already the same, so that's great. Now I'm gonna go scroll over here, click on the text block, black arrow tools, zoom in on it, and I'm gonna grab the tuck is the name of the cat, plus his adoption date, command zero. I'm going to just highlight this portion, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing, edit, paste without formatting, and it seems like just about everything worked out except for a couple things. One, I'm going to need to triple click on the word tuck. And I'm going to need to come up here, click on the paragraph portion up at the top of this palette so that I can find this thing here, the space before, and change that to be three picas. And then I can look over here and I can see, oops, it's also indenting this minus 2p6. So I'm going to change that to be zero and everything else should be set up the way it needs to be. Which does remind me, I'm gonna move back to page one. The word adopted was capitalized here. This is just to show, I did that on purpose, to just show that once you put the drop shadow on in InDesign or Illustrator, it's not in Photoshop, but in InDesign or Illustrator, it's smart enough that if I make a text edit change after the fact, it's gonna go ahead and adjust the shadow. So if I highlighted the capital A and adopted and changed that to be a lowercase a, Sometimes it takes a second to redraw the screen, but it automatically adjusts the, shower, the shadow underneath the all cap A to now fit the lowercase A. I'm gonna move back to page two, but that's all adjusted just fine here. I'm gonna go ahead and highlight this text while I'm here though, and change the swatches to be black for all of that. Um, I might as well go ahead and get adjusting on the placement of the headline where, where this is supposed to wrap and go ahead and set the green text. So for that, I'm gonna look at the go by. This is gonna end up with human, fur, comma, and then that. So let me go back to this. Every morning my human shaves off. Okay, so this text block isn't wide enough. I'm gonna click on this group and I can't just grab this now because it's got all these other pieces attached to it. So I wanna ungroup this before I make the adjustment. And to do that, I go up to object and I pull down to ungroup, which happens to be the group command of command G plus the shift button. Click off and I'm gonna click on the text block and I'm gonna slide this over. And now it's breaking where it's supposed to be, human, fur, comma, and then like that. So this is pretty good. The only adjustment I still need to do is I'm gonna click on the quote marks, click command one, I'm gonna draw myself click off on everything, I'm gonna draw a rectangle, and I'm gonna draw it the size of the quote mark to this E, change it to be some color that's different for right now, command zero, move this over and put it about where after the word that would end up being. The, um, the vertical alignment of the quote mark though should be right, so I'm just gonna click on the quote mark and I'm gonna just start moving it over so I don't have to adjust it either or draw some kind of new guideline down. Move this over to about where it's supposed to be. And then I'm gonna zoom in like command one, move my spacer back to the period, click on the quote mark, move that so the alignment is good, click to delete this, command zero. Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead just to get in the habit of doing this every once in a while, I'm gonna pull up the file and go to save just so I don't lose any work. Uh, let's add this kind of green color, the chartreuse greeny color to his eyeball. Um, I'm gonna come over here to where I find the eyedropper tool, which should be this very top one here. I don't really wanna use the eyedropper theme tool, I wanna, or color theme tool, I wanna just use the plain eyedropper. I'm gonna hover this, there's a lot of different shades up in his eye. So I'm gonna try to find one of the brighter parts, and I'm gonna put the tip of the white part of the eyedropper right there. Click, I'll see it pop up over here. Actually, that didn't grab a very green spot on that. So I'm going to uh, go back and go to the black arrow tool and click off so it deselects that color. Gonna get the tip of the eyedropper, maybe somewhere up here in the right. Click on it. Okay, that definitely made a brighter color, kind of this yellow green right here. 
So I'm going to be happy with that for right now. And I could apply this to some of the objects on the page, but I think in the long run, the better thing to do is to add it to the color palette. And that way, if you ever changed the, you wanted to change the color, which I'm going to make you do, um, it'll automatically adjust all the uses of that color on the document. If I use the eyedropper to just come in here and apply it to that thing, that's great, but it's a separate color. It's not in the palette. So if I ever change this color, which we will, um, I'd have to go back and change all those pieces by hand. So instead, once I've clicked on it and I see the, the eyedropper and I see these colors pop up over here, if I go to the sandwich icon and go to new color swatch, it's going to load that color up right here and it's going to want to add it as a process RGB color, fine, click OK. And now let's go get the white arrow tool, click on the quote marks and say you be that color and you be that color. I'm then going to go ahead and just slide the page over to the right. Everything down here is good except the web address. So I'm going to go ahead and slide and make the shelter pet. And if I can't see whether I got the period or not, I could hit Command-1 to zoom in. Oops, I do. So just highlight Shelter Pet Project and change this to be that color. And then for right now, I'm also going to go ahead and do that to this. This yellow color and this greenish chartreuse color are too close to try to use on the page. Remember, if you want to have contrast, either have them be the same or be really different. That's too close to being the same. So I'm going to change this. And then at that point, um, I... I have done enough adjustment and by making the changes over here, it got rid of the drop shadow. So let's leave it off on this one. I like the placement of the quote mark because I stole that from the other page. I now readjusted this one. So let's click on the quotes, hold down the shift, click on this one, and then we'll go ahead and add the text block, object, group. Where should this one be? Well, it should be, I'm gonna move it straight up so that the top of the quote mark is sitting on that margin line and the left edge is sitting on it. Command zero, turn the swatch palette off. The only thing I'm not happy about with right here, I could, this finger, if it's pointing out what would be kind of like the left edge of the jaw of the cat, that's fine. If you want to fiddle with the placement of it to move it, the cat left or right slightly, that would be fine. In some ways, I wish it was closer here, but you don't need to do that for this. Big problem here, though, is even though these things fit, is sometimes the cat's, if the cat's looking in this direction, maybe I don't want that much emphasis drawn to these things. I'd rather have him looking off to nothing, which will tie this to this a little bit more. Plus, I just want you to move these things anyway. So let's go get the black arrow tool, click on this group, one of these logos, grab it and move it. I'm gonna dump it so that they're sitting down here. I'm going to go ahead and hit Command-1 on that. Um, I think that I'm gonna have you move these ones. Let's make a vertical guideline, and let's let it go on the A and adapt, adopted. Another vertical guideline right after the one in his adoption date. And then I'm going to go ahead and tap these guys so that the bottom of them, and I'm going to really go by the ad council one, is sitting on that pink line. Again, if these two logos are slightly bigger and they dangle slightly below that margin, that's fine because they probably look optically more correct. But now I need to have the left edge of the ad council lined up here, and I need to have the right edge of like this cat's head lined up here. I need to tap them to the right slightly to get the ad council one in the right place. But now I have to go object, um, ungroup, click off, and click back on the Humane Society. Tap it straight over to the right. Let's just go by that cat's head so that it's lined up on this thing, which does throw the Y off by a little bit. Same kind of thing, let's use the align palette. Click on this, hold the shift button down, click on this, and click on this. So I've got all three of those things selected. Window, object and layout, align. Same kind of thing, I'm going here under the distribute section and I'm clicking on this thing and telling it to distribute horizontally based on the center. So these ones are spaced out a tiny bit more. Again, while they're still selected, go back to object and tell it to group, command zero flash the W so I'm not seeing anything else. I'd say that this is pretty close to the go by. Oh, except we need to add the little black shadow around this thing. And maybe I want you to fiddle with the color slightly. So I'm going to say, let's go back to page two of the document you've been working on. 
let's go get the white error tool. I don't want to take the time to ungroup this. Click this on this quote mark. Go to swatches. Change this so that the stroke is up and tell it to be black. It's just a little bit pale. I want the edge of the to punch up just a little bit, but let's not make a fat line around it. And then let's make a slight tweak to the green color just so you can see what this does. By placing these things in off the swatch, if I double click on this color in the swatch palette, any adjustment I make to this will automatically update live to all the other versions of that in the document. I'm gonna hit uh, cancel to undo that. I'm gonna double click on this. Let's say I just want you to move this middle line where the, the red, green, and blue color, move the green all the way to the right. Oh, well, maybe not all the way to the right, but a little bit further to the right. And that will probably make the thing a little bit greener and it'll definitely make it more saturated. That color was a little bit on the dull side. Now, <clears throat> it may no longer be the exact same color as, it's probably still about the same hue as this cat eye, but it definitely increased the chroma or the saturation on it, and it helped the green punch up. And I, as long as you think this still looks like this is in the same family, we're good. If not, you could adjust the, red, the green line back a little bit to the left, but click OK, and we're gonna say, this is good now too. Plus that helps this pop out a little bit more. Command S to save. Last thing I'm gonna ask you to do right here is to hit Command A to copy everything on this page. Go to Object, I'm sorry, Layout, Pages, um, Insert Pages, One Page After Page Two, click OK, go up to Edit, uh, pull down to Paste in Place, and now we're gonna, oops, I didn't select everything I only had. That text block selected for some reason. So let's grab all this again. Copy, let's move to page three, hit it, paste in place. So now I've already started to build you, you know, in essence have a du duplicate of the cat picture, but this is the one where you're gonna make your own adjustment. I encourage you to play with the new headline if you wanna leave it wrapped here. Do you wanna, when you put the picture in, do you wanna leave it still wrapped on three lines? You have to leave the basic principle the same. Or if the dog's head that you find is so much bigger, Maybe you want the headline to stack on four lines. That would be fine. What about the placement of these things? Would it work better for them to be here? Or would it work better for them to be placed up like they are here on the Bulldog? Uh, if you wanna move the location of the Adopt logo slightly, if you want to find a photograph of a, of a dog, the, the head is over here and all the blank space is over here and basically invert this. So the face would be here. You could move the headline over, but I still think I'd like you to keep the Adopt logo in the web address somewhere toward the bottom right. You have a lot of freedom. I'm not asking for this to be the most uh, uniquely designed thing. We're gonna start from scratch on a different part of this project some other time. Um, um, but before we leave, one more thing we need to do on this one, and that is I need to change the color of these logos I just realized. Get the white arrow tool, click on the Ad Council logo, go up to File Place. Now this time we're gonna place the Ad Council logo black and it will resize that logo since there's no size difference between these. It'll go ahead and update. This is the Maddie Swan Gray, and this is the Humane Society Black. And it, since those logos were the, the white and the black versions were the exact same size, because it, that box had already been sized to a certain thing, when you replace the picture, it's gonna automatically update the, the same sizing, the same spacing and everything like that. Hit save. Remember, probably a good thing for you to do at this point is go up to File and pull down to Package so that it's going to make a folder that's going to include a PDF of this. Plus, it's going to put the InDesign document, a copy of all of the links, a copy of the fonts and everything, and then you could zip that and be able to email it to yourself or put it over on a flash drive to save. So that's the end of this explanation.